Hello and welcome to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. My name is Drew, call sign AC3DS, and this is my dog. And today we are going to upgrade the ICOM 7300 uh, firmware. That's what we're doing. You distracted me. Um, and in order to do the 7300 upgrade, all that you really need is an SD card and a computer with internet access and a little bit of time. Um, now, I'm really excited about doing this upgrade because I've been waiting for, for ICOM to release some changes to the, the scope waterfall view. And when I looked at the notes for this firmware upgrade, that was the first thing that they listed, which I was thrilled about. Now, I, I haven't actually seen the upgrade, but I'm anticipating that it probably looks and functions a lot like the 705, which you know, if you've seen any of the videos or if you have a 705, you know that there's some really nice things that are happening with that uh, particular unit. So hopefully they've brought some of those same features over, and but we're going to find out one way or another. So let's, let's do it. So the first thing is go to the ICOM website. So let's do that. All right, so to get the software, let's go to Google, and we're just going to type in ICOM 7300 firmware upgrade. We'll just type in firmware. And the first thing that comes up is ICOM Japan. And let's just choose that one. Okay, so here we are at icomjapan.com slash support slash firmware underscore driver 3248 slash. And this is what we want, version 1.40, which was an update released on February 26th, 2021. And here's all of the notes about the major changes, which is great. And then here is the manual download page. So if you want to actually look at the manual and read about this update, you do that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to click here. I have read. Go ahead and download this. It's only going to take uh, a few seconds here and it'll download. Once it's downloaded, you're going to have to unzip the, the file that's here. All right, so once the zip file has been fully extracted, you'll be left with this 1.dat file. That's the 7300 uh, underscore 140, and the 140 indicates the firmware version, so 1.40. Uh, 1 and then all you have to do is move that .dat file onto your SD card. Now, if I just move it here, I'm just going to drag it over here. Here's my SD card. Uh, if I just drag this file over, right, and I just move that on, let's just do it there. Yeah. Um, now, it, this is not going to work. If I put the SD card into the computer net or into the ICOM 7300, it will not recognize the file because it's not in the IC7300 folder. So you're going to want to make sure that you have this folder, this IC7300 folder, or that you have used the ICOM7300 in order to format the SD card that will then create the full folder structure that it's looking for. So that 7300.dat file here just gets moved directly into the ICOM, the IC7300 folder. So the .dat gets moved in. And now it's in there. It doesn't have to be in any of these other folders. It is there, and that is it. Take the SD card out, and you're good to go. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is to save your settings. So put an SD card into the machine. Then choose Menu, Set, SD card. We're going to save our settings. And I'm going to do it as a new file. And I'm going to clear out the name of the file by holding down the, the Clear button there. And then I'm just going to call this M-A-R uh, March, and we're going to call this 2021. Uh, I'm just going to call this V2, because I actually already did this once, but then I made a change. So version 2, save file. Yes, I've saved that file. Good. So and I can confirm that it's there. Uh, there's my March 2021 V2. So I know, I know that I'm good, right? I, mean, I, I know that it's there. So now that I know that it's there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load the firmware. I'm going to go back out of this. I'm actually going to remove this particular SD card because I've saved it onto a different one. All right, now that I have my firmware upgrade downloaded and installed on my SD card, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to choose Menu. 
Then I'm going to choose set. Then I'm going to choose SD card. And finally, firmware update. ICOM provides me with this cautionary note here that, uh, you know, whenever you're upgrading a firmware, it could potentially go very badly, resulting in you needing to, you know, send the whole unit back to Japan in order to have it fixed. And so, you know, buyer beware. So are you sure that you want to do this? And yes, I am sure. So I'm going to click yes. All right, so there's two files here now. And the first one is starts with a dit da, and the second one starts with just 7300. And just to be super clear about this, no ICOM is not uh, appending um, or prefixing all of their file names with the Morse code letter A. What's actually happening here is this is a result of saving the file on, a, on a, an Apple computer and just different file systems with uh, metadata that can't be saved properly. It's, it's, a, it's a weird thing that happens sometimes. So in any case, you can ignore that one. This is the one that you want if you had saved from a Mac. Um, and then it says, are you sure? Don't turn it off. Never remove the SD card while this is in process. You sure that you want to do it? And I do. So let's do it. Choose yes. All right, so I've hooked up my antenna now, and so let's take a look at some of the functionality that's been added with this new release. And the first one, the most exciting one, the one that I was hoping for, and they did it. They added the scope scrolling view. Uh, so here's what here's what it looks like, right? In the normal, uh, you know, in the normal waterfall view, if you scroll and you scroll out of band, um, nothing like you just don't see any change, right? You could just keep scrolling, but it's staying on the same uh, view. Uh, however, now, if you hold down this center fix button here on the screen, you'll see that it actually added a little scroll F indicator there. And so now, you'll notice that my uh, band edges are from 7 megahertz to 7.3, so uh, 300 kilohertz uh, range there. And when I go off, it automatically adjusts, and it's now from 7.3 to 7.6. So I can scroll, and I can just keep scrolling. And even though I'm out of band here, it can still, it'll keep showing me the waterfall, which was nice because before you had to be just on the center um, version of the, of the scope view, of the waterfall view here. So. Uh, really, really like this. Now, also, they've added an additional edge view. So if I press the edge here, now I'm on edge number two, which has changed my band edges. Now I'm at 7.150 to 7.180, so a 30 kilohertz range. And so now I can see that, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, zoomed in here. And I can now just keep scrolling, and the waterfall is moving with me which is great. And again, I can hear, hit edge again. And now I'm moving to a 7.2 to 7.37. So a 170 kilohertz uh, range. Uh, and it's, it's looking really good. I like it. I, I could not be happier with this functionality. Thank you, ICOM, for hearing and doing something about this. Okay, so next, um, let's see, what else did they add? Let's go into the menu for a moment. So if I go into menu, you'll notice now that you have two different menu options here. The second one is the presets, which, and I actually really like this. So if I click on presets, I have the ability to quickly and easily move between different presets. And in order to add or change one of these presets, what you want to do is you want to go to a blank one, uh, hold it down, and then you're going to choose to edit the preset memory. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose uh, maybe my mode. Uh, sure, maybe this is going to be a, a lower sideband mode, so I'll tick that box. Yes, maybe I'm going to use a filter. And I can keep scrolling down through all of these different options to choose the different things that I want to have it set to. Um, no, I don't want to cancel the edit. I'm going to go all the way back up here, though. And now I'm just going to give this preset a name. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, test. Uh, test, right? I'm going to hit enter. 
And then what I need to do is I need to save it. I'm just going to hold down on the preset name. I'm just going to choose the word write there. He's going to write it, yes. And so now I have it as being my fourth preset option. If at any point in time I want to change it, like here I created this Drew CW uh, preset here, I can just hold it down and I can edit the preset memory. And I can go back through and I can make those changes. So again, something that's pretty nifty. I like it. Very happy about that. I am very curious as to see what gets added into all of these other menu options here. Uh, I'm, I've tried clicking on them or holding them down, and maybe there's a way of being able to add something. I haven't seen it yet, but maybe ICOM has something coming out for these, these boxes. I, one can only hope. Um, okay, so what, are, what else? Uh, let's see here. So in the menu, uh, we do now have a, an additional option under function, or actually maybe two different options. So right here on the page seven out of eight under the function, you now have the, whoops, go back one here, the front key customize and the mic key customize. So under the front key customize, I can now choose what each of these buttons does. So here's my, my Vox button, my auto tune button, uh, my up down buttons. So over here, right? Um, I can go, let's go down here. Uh, so that looks like that page is it. Um, well, wait, oh, yeah, front key customize. Yeah, that looks like that's it though. Um, and so, but anyway, you can change at least those four buttons to be something else entirely. So if I want to change this, I hold it down uh, and I can choose the default. But if I just click on it once, I can then to I can choose what I want it to be set to. All right, so I just click on it once. I could choose memory channel down. I could choose voice key or memory memory uh, preset. So you've got some options. You can you can now customize this a bit more, which is nice, right? Um, so now going back out here to the function menu, you now also have the mic key customize, and so this is actually for on your mic and using these buttons that are here, the, the up and the down uh, buttons that are on the top of your microphone, you can now change what they do. Um, and so again, something that's just nice to be able to customize if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, so I definitely appreciate the fact that, you know, that ICOM is giving us that additional functionality. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I think the last big thing, and maybe I'm, I'm forgetting something, uh, is the multi knob. So the multi-knob has the ability now, uh, and actually if you, you can see it here, this kilohertz up there, you can assign things to be controlled by this multi-knob. So just as an example of this, if I uh, press the button in once, and now if I choose, say, my RF power and I hold it down, now you'll see that it reads RF power in that top little indicator. And if I turn this multi-knob, it's going to turn the RF power. And I am very happy about this because sometimes I, I have a tendency to switch between antennas and if I'm doing like SWR testing or I'm doing anything else and I don't want to have it at full, uh, full power, it's not that it was a big deal to have to go into that menu, it really wasn't, but it is nice to just be able just to quickly turn it down to zero or turn it down to 10 or five or whatever and, and then quickly go off, off and you know, do something and keep going. Um, so, I mean, I really like this. I, I, I like the fact that we now have the ability to customize that, that multi-knob a bit more. Um, so that's what I've found thus far. There might be other things. I did take a look at the, uh, the menu, and at least those are the, the menu, the, the notes, the, the release notes for this firmware, and uh, felt like that was pretty much it. So there you have it. I hope that this helps. Until next time.